And we uh, had a little special announcement. One of a, a guy who, uh, named Tim Lopez, who is near and dear to everyone who comes into the NovaCare complex. We see him every day. We rely upon him. He made the pick with a little help from Bill Bubba Berge. Hi, I'm Bill Berge of the Philadelphia Eagles, and I'm here to introduce Tim Lopez, who is the grill chef of the Philadelphia Eagles, for, to announce our next pick. With the 20th pick of the seventh round, number 237 overall, the Philadelphia Eagles select Brian McCallick, defensive end from Boston College. We got delicious, nutritious food ready for you at the NovaCare, man. Come on down. Come on down. And that spatula is something that Tim Lopez uses with absolute perfection. Thank you very much, Bill, and thank you very much, Tim. We'll learn more about Mr. Mahalik when head coach Chip Kelly meets the media. Now let's bring it, uh, bring it real to our draft expert, Tony Pauline, draftinsiders.net. He's in New York City. He's been watching this draft for many months. Tony Pauline, what do you think about this? Defense, defense, and more defense. I think we knew it all along. I mean, really, we figured that the Eagles were going to go with a speed receiver, a guy who can stretch the field. They got that in round one, and you knew they wanted bigger cornerbacks. They wanted to fortify that, uh, that middle of the field. I think they've done a good job of that. Well, I don't think we knew that the Eagles would go wide receiver and then five straight defensive players. Uh, we have not been able to find a whole lot of information about Mihalik. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, absolutely. He, he actually looks like a, an NBA center on the field. I mean, he's massive. He sticks out to you on film. Sort of an underrated, under the uh, forgotten about guy in the scouting community, which is sad. He's a high motor player, hustles to make plays, could be used at defensive tackle. You could use him as a two gap end when you line up three, when you use three man lines. Uh, not, the, not the greatest athlete, but and not the greatest playmaker, but someone who's going to occupy the blockers and allow teammates to, make, teammates to make plays on the ball. I'd be very surprised if Mahalik's not on the active roster come September. Well, it's interesting when you look at the Eagles roster, and we're very familiar with the roster. You know, Taylor Hart, a fifth-round draft pick, has added a bunch of weight and strength to his body. He's pushing for a playing time. Brandon Bear had a very nice season last year in his role. The Eagles... Uh, deep, young, and talented up front. So, uh, I mean, if Mihalik makes the roster, he's going to have to beat out some very talented players. Hey, but you can never have enough good defensive linemen. I mean, teams, re re you know, are struggling to have one or two. The more depth you can end up there, the more sub packages that you can use, uh, that's a good thing. All right, so let's talk about the sixth round uh, with Shepard and Evans added. Your thoughts on those two players, which give the Eagles three defensive backs drafted. Yeah, Ja'Cory Shepard is a solid cornerback. He's been struggling with a, a severe hamstring injury since January, but if you watch the film, he's got excellent ball skills, uh, effective facing the action, as well as in man coverage. Not the biggest guy, but I think a potential dime back at the next level. Randall Evans, uh, he's an intriguing prospect. He's played both cornerback and safety, had a great pro day, has shown flashes at Kansas State, but never really pulled it together. He's the sort of guy that if he makes the team, it's as a dime back, but he must earn his wage primarily on special teams. Has the athleticism to develop for the future. Uh, Tony, let's talk about the draft. And as you look at the six picks the Eagles have made, uh, do you like what the Eagles have done? Well, you know, you knew they were going to want to fortify their defense, defensive secondary. They did that in free agency. I think they've done it in the draft. They added another piece on offense. They added a good defensive lineman. So overall, and I don't think any of these players were real were reaches. You know, you're not saying that any of these guys that they took in the first round and the second round could have been had uh, later on in the draft. So I think overall, they got good value. They got players that, that could help them both now as, as well as uh, moving forward in the future. Tony, uh, by our count, and this is unofficial, the Eagles have 73 players on the active roster. Obviously, every team gets up to 90 players. And so the Eagles, in theory, then, would be very active in the post-draft period. Uh, in general, good group of players. Is, are there a couple of names out there who might get to uh, the post-draft period who are really heads and shoulders above others? Well, there's always some guy, one or two players that slips down. I think they should be able to get some receivers as undrafted free agents. Still a decent amount of running backs out there if they're looking for a situational player. Yeah, some some linebackers as well. How about the offensive line, Tony? We, we all have been wondering why the Eagles have not addressed the offensive line. And Chip Kelly 
comes back and says, well, we've only lost one, and that's Todd Harriman's. Um, but we kind of look at the, the offensive line and see that there's some age with Jason Peters, some age with Evan Mathis. Um, and your, your feelings on the offensive line, the crop post-draft? Yeah, uh, post-draft, uh, most of those guys, if, if you watch the fourth round, there was a big run on the offensive line, both at the tackle and the uh, guard position, and it really thinned out. So they may bring a few uh, undrafted free agents in uh, once uh, the seventh round is over, but I don't see any big names out there. All right, Tony. Uh, could you give us just an, uh, an immediate reaction grade to what the Eagles have done? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be conservative. I'm going to say, because it's all on paper right now, I'm going to say it's a, anywhere between a B to a B plus. I, I, I lean towards a B. I like Aguilar, but I think he's more of a second, a second receiver. I like Eric Rowe a lot, but, you know, he's not, the, he's not a, a polished prospect yet. There'll be some bumps in the road. I think a lot of the other guys that they, they, uh, they selected are more situational role type players who can also play special teams. You need those types of guys. It wasn't an earth shattering uh, draft, but it's one of those selection of players that will help here and there, you know, may not may make plays that don't show up on the stat sheet. A more conservative, conservative approach than perhaps you expected from Chip Kelly, not moving around as much as a lot of people out there thought. Uh, you know, th that makes for good headlines, but you know, you've got to let the draft come to you. And I like the fact that, you know, he traded picks now for future uh, selections. That's always, that's, that's what the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick have consistently done. If they won a lot of Super Bowls, so you know you just don't trade for the sake of trading. You only trade if you're targeting a player like they did with Eric Rowe, and there, it's good value there. It's a good deal. Tony Pauline, DraftInsiders.net, as always, stellar work for our Draft Central show here. We thank you so much for joining us throughout the weekend. Thanks for having me, Dave. Tony Pauline, thanks so much, and we'll take a break right now. When we return, Chip Kelly. We'll have his end of draft press conference. We'll wait for that as we continue on Eagles Draft Central presented by Deaton Watson.